beautiful thing, man. Up next, we got Ricky Woods, Murder, Inc., Irv Gotti. I can't wait to see what's going on in this young lady's life. She's beautiful, she's talented, and she got it going on. Shout out to The Real. What's going on, everybody? Yo. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing all right. Thanks for coming on the show, man. Yeah, man. So you're 24 years old. You're from New Rochelle. You ever been to Rockland County? I'm I, I'm 26. Are you 26? And, yeah. Where's that? Brooklyn? No. <laughs> no. You're from New Rochelle, right? Yeah, I'm from New Rochelle. You said Rock. right. Rockland County. That's like right close to New Rochelle. That's most of okay. Um. You've been to Palisades Mall, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. So tell us, man. How was, how is it? What's going on? How was, how was Stingy? Stingy is doing really good. You know, it went number twenty on the indie charts, which is cool. Mm -hmm. We got a um, a video cooking up, all that good stuff. So how was it growing up in New Rochelle, man? Calm. Growing up in New Rochelle is cool. It's very suburban, so you know, I go to the high school, play sports, theater program, stuff like that. You play sports. Yeah, lacrosse and tennis. What sport? Oh, you played lacrosse and tennis? Mm -hmm. How good was you? That's different. I never heard that. No, yeah. I played varsity since seventh grade for both of them, so I was pretty mm -hmm. good. That's that's very great. That's big. Mm -hmm. You said you played varsity since what? Seventh grade, so since I was like since seventh grade? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what is your um what is your background? What are you? I'm black, Filipino. Straight black? Mm -hmm. Shout out to the real man. So How'd you get, what's your inspiration? And how did this murder, I know that's family, but how did that come about? Um, well, I've been making music since I was like 16 in the studio, but I was mm. always a part of musical theater. And uh, flash forward to like 24 years old, mm. I got the opportunity to work with Irv on some projects mm. after he seen me working and some of the artists mm. we working with were interested in working with me, so we just mm. took it from there. And we so you're signed to Murder Inc. as an artist? No, I'm independent. Oh, you're independent? Mm -hmm. So you was never signed to Murder Inc.? I was running around with them, you know, that's family, so might as mm. well have been signed to them because they always mm. look out for me, but no, nah, I'm an independent artist. Mm -hmm. So how was it growing up in the household with the Gaudis, man? Being around um, them. I would see them on like holidays and stuff. You know, they're my uncle, so I would see them as much as like any other family member. Like if you have uncles in your family, I'd see them probably as much as you see yours. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? How'd you take the how'd you take the um, all the memes of Earth Gotti lately? How'd you take that? We all think it's hilarious. No, I think it's hilarious. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's talk about your music. How, what was the first what's your musical inspirations? Um, I would say Sade, Erica Badu, Lauren Hill, um, Vanessa Carlton, Bruno Mars. Mm. I like Broadway show tunes, love murder mm. songs. You feel me? It's a, it's like a combination of a bunch of different things. Mm. So what you say, what songs, what's coming up next for you? I have a couple of singles that I'm going to be dropping soon. And talk about it. Talk about it. Let's see. Um, I have the song As I Am. I made that in LA with my mm -hmm. guy Jazz Laser. We make a lot of music together. So mm -hmm. we'll probably be making that. That's Do you write your own songs? Mm hmm. You write your own songs? Yeah, I'm a songwriter. I'll also mm -hmm. sing other songs because I have a lot of songwriter friends, producer friends. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time they'll ask me to be the vocalist on their record. So if I, if I like it enough, I'll usually hop on. Mm. So what you learned in the industry so far? Has it been difficult? Um, the industry, I would say you have to just keep on going. It's a it's a journey. I've learned that you have to take everything, all the lessons and apply them so that you could always grow, become better. Um, mm. Yeah, I would say the industry will teach you if you want to be an independent artist or if you want to sign to a label. Mm. Um, I'm more so independent. My uncle Chris, Chris Gotti, he's always been my manager and he's what we're advocates for. 
So I would say that's where I learned out of the industry. I like to be independent. Mm -hmm. I like to be able to um, kind of just be in control of my career. So mm -hmm. did anything happen to you know to make you like that? To for you to want to be independently, or you just started out like that from just? Yeah, I started out independent, and there's a lot of um, there's a lot of pros to being an independent artist. I'm an R&B artist, so one of the most, like, you're always going to be working in collaboration with other labels and other companies, stuff like that. And mm. the cool part is that it's a partnership. You're still included as a boss and or have some type of control and leadership involved. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I've always been taught how to be my own boss since the beginning, and I've stayed true to that for, for the most part. Mm. So let's talk about your single with Money Bag, yo. How did that come about? That was cool. That was when I was out in Atlanta. I was working with Irv. We had a song. It was an EDM record, but he thought it would be cool to have um, a rapper hop on to it. So he got in contact with Money Bag, yo, yo, Gotti, and they agreed to do the song. Well, that song is kind of crazy because I'm pretty sure a lot of people can relate to it. Have you ever been through some situation like that? Yeah, that's how I wrote the song. The song is about me. Oh, the song is about you? What yeah. was going on? What was going on that you made you write that song? In the industry, I'd say dating isn't, it's a little difficult, especially mm -hmm. busy. So you kind of just wonder if situations are over or not, because there's a lot of time that goes in between things going said, stuff like mm -hmm. that. Talk about it. So you have you dated in the industry? Uh. Not necessarily. Like I as far as somebody in the industry. Seriously, but I've like dated guys here and there. Mm -hmm. So you ain't been in no serious relationship lately? No, I'm very work driven, focused on what I've got going on. A lot of mm -hmm. people don't necessarily mm -hmm. got my attention. <laughs> so uh, do you even, is commitment in your future? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um. I come from um, my both my parents. They've been married for thirty years. I actually mm. just wrote a song, um, for their anniversary. It's on my story. I'd like to drop that song too, though. It's a good song. But I come from love, so I definitely think that's where I'll end up. It's mm. on. But as of right now, um, I don't know. This era is you'd have to you'd have to prove it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Mm. So any other collaborations that you have done uh, that you want done in the future? Um, I have a, I have a couple tucked away right now that are cool. Um, mm -hmm. I have some that will be on Irv's movie soundtrack. I just came back from Atlanta. I was working with him on a couple of those records. That's pretty cool. And then I'll actually, I might have a song with Jay Critch dropping. Um, I've had that song for a while. But it's all kind of up to me when I'm ready to drop these things. So I'm trying to just make it make sense. So how would you describe yourself? Um, I'm pretty laid back, calm. I'm very creative. So like sometimes I'm gone. I'll be in my little cocoon. But then sometimes I'm outside. Got the wings mm. out. Flaunting mm. whatever I just created. <laughs> outside of music, how do you like to spend your time? You know what I'm saying? If you had a, if you could describe the perf a perfect day, how would you describe it? Um, a perfect day, I'd probably yeah. wake up, go meditate by the water, then come home, shower, cook myself some breakfast. This is what I do every day. I have pretty great days every day. I'm not gonna mm -hmm. lie. I think it's important to start your day off the way you like it. Mm -hmm. so. Meditation, oh. meditation. How did you get into that? Okay. What? How did I get meditation. into meditation? Talk about meditation. meditation. How long do you meditate a day? I, I I started off with 15 minutes, but I could go for like probably 30 minutes or an hour now. Mm -hmm. How do you do? You sit down or you just sit any type of way? You got, um, like you in a Zen pose? Like what, how do you do it? When I'm sitting outside, I'm just sitting there. Like there's no people. <laughs> people <laughs> overthink the idea of meditation and and just mm -hmm. being calm. Like you don't have to, you don't have to be like this and. You know, you don't have to like be like this. You just have to be with yourself, with your own thoughts, calm, try to clear your mind and, and just be still. What is spirituality? What does that mean to you? 
spirituality? Um, it means a lot. What to is me. it coming to? You? What do you it value that at? This <laughs> this industry, you have to find ways that work for you to stay grounded, because mm. it's a lot. It's a it's a big judgment zone. You know, a lot of people will say the phrase like, oh, judgment free zone, like with their friends when they want to be vulnerable. And mm -hmm. music is one of the most vulnerable places, right? If you're a singer or an artist, like you're tapping in with your most vulnerable side to kind of translate whatever it is you're going through, whether it comes off like R&B or if you're a rapper and it's more like hardcore. At mm -hmm. the end of the day, you're always kind of... Um, you're you're tapping into something inside of you so in order to protect yourself you have to in my opinion everyone's different but i think it's important to develop a strong sense of spirituality so that you can navigate through all of the craziness of this industry Absolutely. It gets, it gets wild so you have to find peace within so that when you go and you're um you're like you're just sharing your your presence with everyone else it doesn't you know, it doesn't come off any type of way. It's just whatever you want it to be or your true self. So let me ask you. Mm -hmm. Other artists, mm -hmm. who's some of your favorites growing up? Who's some of your favorites? You can go R&B. Who's some of your favorites? I know you're just Erica Badu. I'm talking about hip hop. What kind of music on hip hop side did you listen to? I, well, how I much got, do you listen to hip hop? I listen to hip hop a lot. I got into hip hop more so when I was um, 18, 19. That's when I took like a deep dive into the whole hip hop culture. Before then it was really just like, honestly, I was I was very suburban, yo. Like I grew up in New York, so I was like, you know, I was listening, <laughs> I was listening to like Disney Channel songs, like the mm -hmm. Cheetah Girls, shit like that, mm -hmm. yo. Like, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Matt Anderson. I listened to like Destiny's Child though, like Beyonce. Always been a Beyonce fan. I feel like for a lot of young black artists, they look up to Beyonce. You know, as I got older, I'd say she wasn't so much of like a idol in the sense of, oh, this is what I want to be. Because I just didn't see a lot of myself. Maybe it's because she has an alter ego. Someone, mm -hmm. we were talking about, I was talking about this with someone yesterday like the idea of having an alter ego in this mm. in this <laughs> industry because I'm like Beyonce is probably just Beyonce we probably get to know her Sasha Fierce side so mm. maybe I do have things in common with her but I would say Rihanna she that's that's like ugh, I love her mm. I feel like I have a lot in common with her so I look up to her as an artist I love what she does with her career I think the, the steps that she took to where she's gotten are similar to some of the steps I've been taking. So, yeah. Um, so, what would your alter ego's name be? Me? So you're talking about Sasha Fierce. You ain't got, do you have an alter ego? Bro, I think I need some help thinking of an alter ego name. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> I just, mm. honestly, it's not what that I alter... have a name for it, but I know it exists. It's, yeah, she's what, 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 what would your alter ego personality be? How would you describe it? Um, my alter ego, I would say, it's not too different from what you're getting right now. Like, I can't, mm. I I can only be so, so, like, different from who I am. But, um, a little less shy, I would say, mm. my artist side, it's kind of like lights, camera, action, like, mm. you know? Like, mm. you kind of hear for whatever it is. Like, once you step out the crib, you feel me? You got the fit on. Everybody does. Like everybody, when they got to leave the house to go to work, you feel me? They're putting on mm -hmm. that, like, camera action. So let me ask you, if you had some, all right, so let's say, if you had theme music, man, you know how movies got a theme music, what would your theme music be? When you go out, you about to hit the town, you in the mirror getting dressed, putting oh, on man. your best self, and you about to hit mm -hmm. the street, what would your theme music be? Uh, that's a good question, because it changes all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It changes all the time. Sometimes um, I'll be in like a real like gangster mood. Like I'm ready to just go out in the world and like attack it. So, mm -hmm. you know, I listen to a lot of like Biggie or Tupac. Sometimes I listen to Jay Z. Something that just kind of gets me fired up. You know what I'm saying? Give or, me a, 
<laughs> no, good. Keep talking. Keep going. Or I like to listen to like Lil Baby. His music gets me pretty hype. Um, new artist HD Ben Dope. I've been listening to his song "Wake Him Up." That song gets me hype. Mm. But if I'm in a calm mood, like it's a Sunday and I'm just chilling in the crib, or maybe I'm taking a drive to the city, I listen to like Sade, Drake. Mm. Love Drake on a, on a calm day. Drake is a great vibe. <clears throat> Stuff like that, you know. Stuff like that, you know. <laughs> so let me ask you something. Sound beautiful, sound cute. So listen, if you and the girls went out for karaoke, right? Okay. You know what I'm saying? What kind of what kind of girl? What kind of karaoke would you sing? What, what, what kind what of would be your karaoke song, man? What would you what you be singing if you had to do karaoke? Um, it depends how drunk we get, honestly, because mm. I feel like a great Keisha Cole got some great hitters for karaoke, mm. all of them. Mm. Um. But, like, we could also hit it with, like, a little old-school vibe, like the Icy Brothers, the Izzy Brothers. Mm. I don't know how to pronounce people names. But I like old-school music for karaoke. That's always a vibe, always a vibe. Usher, mm. great mm. karaoke vibe. Mm. We like to karaoke on this side, bro. So mm. it's definitely been done. <laughs> mm. So Broadway you show speaking show. about drink, you got – what's the craziest – let me see. What drunk story do you have to tell me? I know you've been twisted before. Give me a something. Drunk story? Um, yeah, yeah. You talk about you out with the girls drunk. So, yeah, give me something good. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Hmm. I don't know. Just nights out with us. It's it's usually the same. We all like to dance. But I would say the craziest drunk night for me was when I was living in L.A. Mm. Living in well, L.A. was a wild time. That. Because in L.A., you get to meet, like, you, you, I would say it is different for girls, but that's where it is anywhere. Mm -hmm. But you go to these parties and you see, like, some of your favorite artists, you see mad celebrities, stuff like that. So I would say some parties, I'd be lit. Then it takes it away a little bit because you're like, it just shows you how regular all these stars are. Mm -hmm. So kind of being lit at the same time as seeing people like that, you're kind of like, I feel like my my fourteen year self would imagine this way different, or like fifteen, mm. 15 however old you were. But I don't know. I don't get too wild. I know how to hold my liquor and all that. So mm. the most you'll see me do is like on the dance floor with my friends and cracking jokes on niggas. Mm. I'm from New York, so I feel like it's just in my nature to be a jokester. So, what type of man are you interested in? If you had to describe your perfect man, how, how would you describe him to be? Mm, let's see. Hardworking, laid back, um, not too pressed to be, like, known and seen by everybody. Um, yeah. Someone with a good heart, someone with a kind spirit. Mm -hmm. I'm very basic, you know? I look for the simple things in life, not too extra. Mm -hmm. I take care of myself, and I was raised by a very strong and strong woman, so I feel like my mom raised me to um, always be there for myself, so it's not necessarily something I look for. When I'm yeah, so she where does money me. come in on that list? Um, How important is it? I know it's important when it's for self-worth. I mean, does it have to be a baller or, you know, average guys? Do they have a chance? What? No, I think that you have to just be a hard worker. I think that I need to see that, like, you have aspirations and that you're working toward them. Because if that's the case, it like, all that broke shit, it don't last forever. And it's very normal if you're on your grind to, like, not necessarily be up, up. So I've never been one to, like, frown upon it. But I also wouldn't just date a sucker because then there's there's guys that are also, like, not doing shit with their lives. They're just doing the same thing every day. I wouldn't date somebody like that. But if I see that you're working every day toward a goal, you know, and you're doing what you got to do to make ends meet, like, I would date somebody like that. Because well, dating is usually about com companionship, mm -hmm. compassion, things like that. Things like that are lost in our generation, though, because everything is social media. So it's a lot of perception, and facade and like it's not as um it's not as real as what it is in reality so i try to hang on to 
the like the simplicity of dating you know mm-hmm. can you make me happy can you make yourself happy things like that you what know? type of music are you writing right now right now i've been trying to write songs about like life and stuff like that because i feel like as an r&b artist you tend to write about like love songs stuff like that but i recently went to see mj the musical and michael jackson is one of the greatest i think because he was able to make songs that were inspirational about life that kind of kept you going in hard times stuff like that so i don't know i think that i've been trying to make music for just like when you get through a dark space kind of like i don't know this industry is spooky living in la was crazy so i feel like ever since i've moved back to new york I found like a very like peaceful state of mind and I've mm. been trying to translate that through my music. That's beautiful. Thanks. So and then all of a sudden, how would you like how would your friends describe you? What would you tell some tell me something that nobody knows? My friends? About you. Oh mm. man. My friends would say I talk a lot. <laughs> mm. <laughs> they would say they would say I talk a lot. They would say um I would I would say like I'm creative, um, mm. like I'm always drawing or crocheting. Mm. Um, sleepy. I'm oh I'm I'm a I like to say I'm a dreamer. I had I had gotten a reading done and they told me that so now I don't allow people to say that I just be sleeping. It's like nah, I'm mm. game. Fuck out of here. Mm. But they'd be like, oh, Ricky's always sleeping. I'm not ashamed to admit that though, because it's true. But when's your birthday? October seventh. It just passed. October seventh just passed. I'm a Libra. Libra. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Are no, you a I true Libra? Say, Are you a true Libra? Do you have all the Libra characteristics? What is a true Libra? You know, Lib- as I've gotten older, I feel like Libra has gotten like this weird. A bad rap? No, I don't know. Every time, <laughs> every time I see a Libra meme that's hey, and it comes from a Justin LeBoy post, so I'm like, he clearly doesn't like Libras. Mm. It's fine. I think a lot of Twitter doesn't really like Libras. A lot of those meme type of posting places don't like Libras. So I'm like, what is the depiction of a Libra exactly? Because I feel like we're very balanced. You feel mm. me? If you're angry, we're probably the ones that'll help calm you down. Mm. If you're calm, like. I don't know. We might be the ones to hype you up. Mm-hmm. So do you think you're mental or more mental or sensual? Mm-hmm. More mental or sensual? More mental essential? No, more mental. Are you more of a mental person or a sensual person? Um, what do you mean by that? I feel like, I don't know. What do you mean by that? Like, oh, we're I- talking about Libras and what Libras are. Yeah, you're talking about the good characteristics, the bad person characteristics. <laughs> I believe when you said I get a bad rap, so I was asking him kind of. Oh, not me, Libras mm. in general. Mm. I don't know. I feel like Libras were the life of the party. We're always smiling, you know, stuff like that. I think Libras are awesome. Mm. Libra gang. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, That's what are you most proud about? Time. What'd you say? What are you most proud about right now? Dude, I thought you said, what do you cry about? I was like, what? <laughs> That's got, we, interesting we, we, to ask. Nah, mm-hmm. what am I most proud about? Mm-hmm. I'm very proud of my, like, the family I come from. Um, mm-hmm. I think I come from a line of very strong people. So I take a lot of pride in my family. Um, I'm proud of the person I am today. I've done a lot of work on trying to become the artist I want to be, the young lady I want to be. So I feel like I'm proud of who I am today and I could be like a cool role model, artist, friend, lover, all that shit. So my life's in a cool place, proud of that. Um, I, I, I'm proud of the success of the last two singles I put out because mm. being an independent artist is difficult. Um, nothing happens overnight, so to just like be excited about all of the, I don't know, all of just the different, the different milestones that you hit along, along your journey is cool. So getting on the indie charts, that was awesome for me. Cause you know, working alongside someone like Herb, it is, it is a bit easier. You can just have him like 
drop a song and be like, oh, Money Bag Yo is going to be on it. Mm. All right, great. And d- different things like that. But as an independent artist, when you see your song chart on any chart, it's, in- it's inspiring. When I have people like you, like, oh, can we do um, an interview? Like, can we talk about your career? I'd be proud of myself for things like that because I-, I did something to pique someone's interest. And I always say it's like it's one person at a time. So I enjoy all of this stuff. I enjoy the journey. It's cool. So what is your biggest fear? Um, You know, I try not to live in fear. When I was younger, I think I had a lot of fear of success because of, my sh- of me being shy. I think it's like a little nerve wracking to, I don't know, get personal in public. But mm. I don't know. I don't have too many fears right now. I'm not going to lie. I don't like, I don't like to... Th- I don't like to think like that. I don't think there's anything to be afraid of. Mm. Besides God. You fear God. That's about it. What's it like working with Ja Rule, man? Working with Ja is probably one of the coolest things anyone will ever experience. He's mm. um he's been through a lot. So who he is today and the Ja I got to work with is just a super woke individual, someone who is open-minded and willing to give advice where questions are asked um he's very motivating Mm. you know he's not one to just hold back any type of tactics or like advice that he might have so he always you know he's always keeping me ahead of the game he got me into working on my nfts and my digital artwork because he had gotten into business with some people like that and he always noticed that i was drawing and stuff so it's like you know, he looks out in other areas other than music, too, which is cool. But the one thing I always love about my uncles, like Ja, Irv, Chris, they don't do handouts. So it's mm. like um, <clears throat> a lot of people might think that my connection to them would just like, of course, it's an opportunity that others don't. So I feel blessed and I count that blessing all the time. But mm. nobody could just snap their fingers and make you who they are. You have to put in the work when he can recall being in the place that I'm at. So I'd say having someone who's made it through mm. the journey I'm kind of at right now is very inspiring. And that's the type of stuff I would get from working with him. Good advice. So what's, that's not, what's the hardest thing you've ever been through? Um, definitely losing family members. That was, that was rough. I, I don't think anyone's ever really prepared for that. But it teaches you a lot about life, and it teaches you a lot about um, how to keep going. Um, Breakups are hard, like when you fall in love for the first time, and then you have to kind of find yourself outside of that relationship. That can be a bit difficult. But you always pick yourself back up, you know? Mm. You don't fold. You might fall for a little bit. That's okay, but we never fold. And you got to keep going. Yeah. So there's been some hardships, but, you know, nothing I couldn't handle. Mm-hmm. If you um, if you can go anywhere in this world, what would it be? Right now, uh, I've always wanted to go to Africa. I want to go to Bali. I want to go to China and Japan, Hawaii. Mm-hmm. I want to travel the world, man. I want to see everywhere. Mm-hmm. Spain. Yeah. I want to go everywhere. <laughs> so, what about tour life? Tour life, I would love to go on tour. Have you I would been on love tour to. Already? Oh, huh? Have you What'd been you on say? tour already? I have been on a tour. I went on tour with Chris's company, Adventures Music. Is an independent um, distribution platform, so that was really cool. We got we did an East Coast run, so we drove down to Miami and then drove back up to New York. So we hit all those areas, Miami, Atlanta, the Virginias, North Carolinas, stuff like that. And mm. it's really cool to touch those cities because I think those are the foundation of a lot of East Coast artists where you get independent radio stations to play your music and just different DJs tap in differently in smaller cities. So when you go um, on tours like that and you're touching all those bases, it helps grow your audience and people kind of get to know you in person. That's really cool. 
and you get to practice performing, which is always great. Mm -hmm. What about acting? I love acting. Mm -hmm. Acting is where I started off. Um, I was heavy involved in musical theater mm -hmm. growing up. So I was always in a play of some kind, whether there was music involved or not. I loved acting. Mm -hmm. I did some TV work. Now I've, I'm trying to get involved in more acting, I'd say. Mm -hmm. I'm working on my own musical, which is really cool. It's how I've always wanted to um, kind of present my music to the world. So it's been really cool developing that project. I'm excited to release that. I don't have an exact date for it just yet because I don't want to rush it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's going to be a cool way to present my music because I haven't necessarily... Um, done something like that before for my original music so it'll be cool to combine the two worlds what can um what can fans take away from your music your style who you are as a person um i think they could take away that i'm always going with the flow like whatever vibe i'm on is probably what um you'll get that day so if I'm in, like, right now I have my cornrows because I was, like, I'm in grind mode. Like, I'm just, mm -hmm. I don't feel like doing my hair. I don't, you know, I'm in my hoodie. Like, I'm fourth quarter, you know. A lot of it is either release and you're on tour and you're going crazy. Or mm -hmm. if you missed that mark, you're just prepping for first quarter, top of the year. That's my vibe right now. I'm just prepping for top of the year. I'm trying to, you know, get everything aligned spiritually and in the business areas so that you know once 2023 pulls up i got a lot of singles got a project on the way got some tours lined up all that fun stuff yeah so what's up what's up at the top of the year you talk about the top of the year what's it gonna bring mm -hmm. top of the year i have a project dropping so that's gonna be great um irv is gonna be putting out his first movie which is amazing because you know he gets a lot of um he gets a lot of heat, you know, he's a very outspoken man, but at the same time, what he's doing as a black man is amazing. And mm -hmm. I think that if people actually tap into his story and see how he came through the mud, like he's from Queens and I'm a part of the family he's a part of. So I know how, you know, how difficult it was for my mom and all of her siblings to grow up the way that they did. And to get to where they are today is very inspiring. So for me to be a part of his movie, it's such a great representation of black culture. It's inspiring for black men and women. It gives you something to believe in. And so having some of my music a part of that was really cool. That's gonna be coming out top of the year. It's called Made in, Tales Made in America. So that's the name of the movie? That's the name of the movie. Mm -hmm. What's the movie about? It's pretty much about a rapper, a young black man who makes it in the music industry, but kind of just showing, um, you know, how he got it through the mud, just like his different stories through street shit, um, just different things you'll go through with family and friends. It's very relatable. You know what I'm saying? And it's going to be a real movie. Like y'all could catch it in theaters type shit. It's not just going to be something you see online. And he funded the movie himself. He's doing everything himself. So it's like what he's doing is super inspiring. And, you know, he's very, he's very focused. Tunnel vision is, is his thing. So a lot of the time you might not um, understand, but when it, you know, when it all comes out, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And it's, it's quite, um, it's quite, so, it's quite a thing to be a part of. So I feel super blessed that I have the opportunity to kind of see him work and see where he could take it, all that good stuff. What's the most important thing he has ever taught you? Um, I said to you. I would say he has always told me often, like, you know, everyone doesn't see all of the no's that people receive. They only see the success. They see all the good stuff, a part of it. But he was like, if people only knew how, how many no's I get and how much rejection I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, I wonder if they would keep going. And I think 
as I continue my journey, that's something I think of that he's told me often. Like, mm-hmm. you get a lot of rejection, whether it's in, like, your love life or it's in your career, and it makes you feel a bit defeated. So to find that tunnel vision where you're just kind of blocking everything out and mm-hmm. just that that strength and that will um, to survive and to keep going and to just, like, uh, just get through the mud if you could do that you can you can make it you can do anything so i try to hold on to that what's the biggest misconception about you as um, an artist and as a person that i get everything easy in life mm-hmm. how does that make <laughs> think, you feel i think it used to i used to be defensive about it because of how hard i worked but as i've gotten older i think i you know, I totally get it. I would think that too. If I were outside my shoes, I'd be like, wow, you know, her life's so easy. Like Irv's her uncle. Like she doesn't have to think twice about making it in the industry. And, oh, she's a, an attractive female. She probably gets mad niggas and da 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 mm. And I'm like, damn, it don't really be like that in real life, man. I have a very regular life. I have to work just as hard as everybody else. Um and I receive rejection just like everyone else. I I go through very much human things like we all do. So I would say the biggest misperception is whatever perception people have of me as an artist. I would say it's, that's why I like to do interviews like this. And like I like to post on my story and do things like that so that people could always try to see the real me through, through it all. Because it gets lost when you're trying to like drop music or... I don't know if you run around with different people. It's just people will think um, you're everything that you're not. But you are that as well. So it's like a balance. Libra. That's that. Well, you know, well, people want to know, do you get mad, niggas? How's that DM looking? Oh, my goodness. Um, I mean, I don't think that it's like a a lot but I don't think that it's like none I'm not gonna lie like I think guys either meet me or they see my vibe and they just kind of know that that's not how I give it up like I'm not necessarily the one that'll take you too seriously through a DM like Mm -hmm. maybe I, I don't know I would have to like meet you outside of the DM maybe before that so I kinda can tell what's up but yeah, no. I don't know. I'm not really focused on that, man. You know? Mm-hmm. I think it's 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 sweet. It's nice to be acknowledged. It's nice, you know, if girls you can't look for uh satisfaction through it too much. Because it doesn't mm-hmm. you know, it's grain of salt. It's nice, but it's also I next, what's up? <laughs> what what do you want? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> what's the most memorable experience in this game? Uh, the most memorable. The most memorable. Mm-hmm. There's a couple. I have a couple moments that were really, like, they were just really cool for me. I would say when I shot this video, Blame Me, mm-hmm. it was off of my first EP as an independent artist. And I was flown to L.A. by my manager at the time. His name's Julian, to shoot a video and it was just something that we were doing on our own like i was able to shoot it at irv's house i definitely because you know you're balling on a budget so we went on like an app we rented an old school like blue con shiny blue convertible for a 100 bucks for like two hours and then Mm. i hit up irv i was like do you think i could use your backyard to shoot a couple scenes for my video Mm. which was clutch i have a couple other friends i could have asked but i was like you know family first always go there so he was like yeah sure so I was able to go through and he's someone I look up to you know someone I've always wanted to see me working so to be able to shoot a music video at his crib he didn't really pay much attention I, I'm pretty sure he was just inside the whole time or my, maybe he might have left <laughs> I don't remember <laughs> but I was shooting my first big music video in LA so it was really it was really cool for me. I had gotten box braids for the first time and blonde. So I felt mm-hmm. different. Like, I just felt like like I was living the dream on my time. So mm-hmm. it was really cool. And I shot that video. We put it out. And it got over 200,000 views. 
So mm. that shit was awesome. And I felt like, oh my God, like <laughs> I can really do this shit. People mm. try to fuck with me. This is cool. <laughs> um, that ass, that's how mm. I felt. Because mm. I was like, you know, I'm mad low key. So when you put things out, it's very nerve wracking. You're like, oh mm. my God, are people going to like it? Uh, I've crocheted my top like I've been crocheting my outfits for years so because that's I didn't I couldn't afford to go buy designer outfits and stuff like that so I was like fuck it I'll be the designer because mm. in my head I was like that's just as cool as buying like things for hundreds or thousands of dollars like bitch I made this fuck you mean I'm a fucking designer who are you wearing me like mm. that's awesome so <laughs> I would make my own clothes mm. um I make my own clothes and I would put them on in my music videos. Another mm. I for my um my my sis Pinky McCoy. She's my manager. I think you mm. guys have spoken to. Shout um, out to Pinky McCoy. Shout out Pinky McCoy, man. But she um she has a platform called PXVI and you know, she she stands up for all female artists pretty much. She gives us a platform to represent us and I hopped on her um, project, PXVI Take One, and she asked me to do a song for it. And she's like, I want you to do something different, though. Like, I want you to rap. I was like, me? You want me to rap? Yeah. And, like, as an artist, it was a cool challenge, though, because that's not who I am as an artist. I'm a singer. So she took me out of my comfort zone, which was cool. And I wrote a song, Stack It Up featuring my sis Millie Divine and mm. we did that song together but when we shot the video um long story short the videographer he wasn't available so we ended up having our friends shoot it on their cameras Millie's manager was one of them as well mm. and I edited it that was a very cool moment for me because mm. I don't know editing a whole music video is pretty cool mm. and then the obvious ones are shooting a music video with Ja that was amazing. Shooting a video with money bag. That was amazing. You know, things like that. Are, you'll never forget moments like that. But mm. those are moments that are that are given. So mm. it's not that they're not special. But um, when when you accomplish something on your own and you could get the when you get the rewards on your own, I think it's it hits a little different than when someone was like, here, here's a blessing for you. You receive those, you know, but <clears throat> I don't know. The, the the more personal, independent ones definitely keep are the ones that keep me going as an artist. What's the most personal song you got in your arsenal? Um, the most personal, like that's out or that I just have in general. What's most personal means how personal it is to you. Only you can say uh, that. This song I'm dropping next, as I am. What does that mean? As I am, very personal to me. Because it's some it's a song all about um acceptance, really. It's about um just wanting people to accept me for who I am as a person, you know, glam or like this. Like just take me for who I am. It's mm. the same person with or without all the makeup and with or without all the extra shit. So I think that one is probably the one song that resonates the most with me for sure mm -hmm. i can't wait to drop that song it's a that one's a heavy hitter that one's good i think that one that one i feel i've always felt like as an artist that that song is what would take me to where people are like oh do you know that song by ricky i think that would be the song that people say that when is that coming out oh I, I would like to drop it in january mm. So that's when I like to say that it's definite, but I do a lot. Um, being an independent artist is difficult. You got to make sense out of shit. Time, timing is difficult. Deadlines are difficult. That's just the reality of it. I'm a very honest artist. Like, I'm going to just keep the stack. I would like to drop it in January, though. <laughs> mm. what's yeah. The, yeah, what's the craziest thing you ever seen in this industry? Oh, I, <laughs> I need to know if you got thing. any highly dysfunctional. I got to find out if you got any highly dysfunctional stories, man. Because <laughs> you talked about LA being crazy, so I got to come back to that. That's hilarious. I have plenty of highly dysfunctional stories. Give me but, some. Give um, me some, please. Um, 
let's see. Hmm. Like it, like funny ones or like ones where you were just kind of like, damn. Give me what both. The fuck? Give me both. Sounds good to me. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. There is highly dysfunctional. When we were, me, my friends and I were in LA, we're making our way to Miami for the mm. Is It Over music video shoot. So you already know, like, Gotti was high and like, are you at the airport? Did you make it? I'm like, oh my God, nigga. No, we didn't. Because there was like, it was mad dysfunctional. Like, we was trying to get there, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure we was doing the most before we left. By the time we get there, I don't know what time it is, but we all bought like these little wine bottles. And we was just, we was drinking mad wine. <laughs> we finally get there. Our flight had gotten delayed or canceled. We had to switch the flights. That was dysfunctional. Like, shit like that be dysfunctional to me. <clears throat> like, when you just can't control what's going on. So, you, you know, you kind of just have fun while doing it. <clears throat> that was it. To me, that's a, that was a situation that looked highly dysfunctional. Like, when I have videos of it, it looks wild. Music video days are highly dysfunctional, honestly. <clears throat> there's always something. It's always going smooth and right, but there's always something <laughs> that's, <clears throat> like, kind of dysfunctional. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't have too many wild stories. I'm not that wild. Like, I'm not, <clears throat> you know, I went on this other show called the, um, I think it was the part, the Party Starters uh, podcast. And I was like, listen, I've, I've been to a lot, but I don't necessarily have the most wild stories. Or <clears throat> I guess I, one from L.A., like, Irv used to let us drive his Maybach a lot. <clears throat> That shit was crazy. Like, niggas would really be pulling up to parties in a Maybach. Mm. <laughs> that's a cool story. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a cool story. What's it, ain't cooler that than that? it can be mm. dysfunctional when you don't know where to park your shit. Because when you're driving a car like that, like, mm. you know me, I drive a fucking Nissan Sentra. I'm parking my shit anywhere, bro. When you have a Maybach, <laughs> you got a valet. You got to mm. know, like, yo, my so dysfunctional. <laughs> mm. You talked about making clothes, man. What's the most expensive thing in your closet? The most expensive thing in my closet? Um, I'd like to say it's one of my ricochet pieces. The jogger, the jogger pants I made. Mm -hmm. I would run those for at least probably 800 to 1000 for the detail, material, and time that I put into it. Those those are my heavy hitters. Shout out Rick Woods and her, and her brand ricochet third person you know i gotta always hit it with the third person and l u but i don't know bro maybe my louboutin heels the mm. red bottoms mm. that's expensive my montclair bubble coat that's expensive <laughs> so you do do the expensive i dabble like the the montclair was given to me by one of my producer friends Mm -hmm. like eight years ago and i'm pretty sure my cousin crystal has had it captive for like two years but it's mm -hmm. mine so that's something <laughs> <laughs> out of my closet that was expensive um yeah nah i'm not really into that type i i love fashion but i always my mom has always taught me since i was younger that like st having style doesn't have to be expensive like mm -hmm. you know like just because something was expensive don't make it don't make it fly it doesn't. Mm. You feel me? Yeah. Like some of my most fly drip in my closet is thrifted. Mm. And thrift shop drip is like, you know, it could get up there if you go to the more like high end thrift shops and stuff. But for the most part, you're not really spending more than 50 bucks, 80. Mm -hmm. Simple. Do you believe in romance? Of course. I'm a hopeless romantic, my guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so what's your favorite romantic movie? My favorite romantic movie that just cheers um, you up. The Notebook. That's an easy notebook? one. That shit always makes a bitch cry. Mm -hmm. Rent. It's a musical, but they also have a movie version. Beautiful love story. Ugh. Mm -hmm. Definitely tugs on the heartstrings. Um, someone great. That's my favorite chick flick. It's on Netflix mm -hmm. with the girl from Jane the Virgin. I always forget mm. her name, but she's a great actress. Mm. Very relatable. Very relatable. Mm. That's a good one. Uh, I watch New Girl a lot. That shit's mm. pretty funny. It's on NBC. Mm. 
That's a TV show, though. But yeah, those are some movies. Those are good movies to watch if you want to watch like a rom a rom com. When you say you're a hopeless romantic, what does that mean? <laughs> it means that I believe in the traditional sense of what love is, like getting married, you know, having kids mm. after you get married, building a life with somebody. I would call it hopeless because a lot of these motherfuckers in, in society, Gen Z, the millennials, all of us, give a bad rep to the 90s love that made us all believe in that shit. Our parents' love and shit always existed, infidelity and all that fuck shit. <laughs> but mm. social media has just gaslighted it to a not like almost a point of no return. Like people don't believe in love the way I do, I would say. I think mm. that shit's possible though. You just mm. have to meet the right person. And you got to find it within yourself first. Once you can love yourself and like mm. uh, be okay without it, it'll come into your life like that. Mm. Shout out to the real man. It's been beautiful talking to you. Tell everybody where to find you. What's next? Right here, people. Click my name, Rick Woods, R I K. I spell my name different, R I K K I. But R I K W O O D Z on all platforms. Um, if you guys want to download some of my music, I go by Ricky, R I K K I. And I got Stingy out right now, No L's, great hopeless romantic records. We got Heartbreaker, Heartbreaker Remix with Ja Rule. Is it over with Money Bag Yo? You mm. feel me? My first EP, First Time Lover. There's a lot of music for y'all to tap in with. So, you know, mm. link is in my bio. I got a lot of music on the way, some videos. Mm. I got some movies for y'all to watch, top of the year. A lot of fun, really cool stuff coming your way. So I would appreciate mm. y'all tapped in. And shout out Highly Dysfunctional for having me on today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ricky. I appreciate you. Of course. Shout out to the real! <laughs> Thank you, bro. Have a good night. Thank you too. Like we came to shut it down. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, we came to shut it down. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, we came to shut it down. Nah, I don't need no help.